So when Intel said, do you want to check out our new mini PC? Then um, I didn't expect a box this size to arrive. Let's have a look what's inside. And let's have a look at the sponsored segment. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out hookies.com in the video description below i think this should be the cheat in here what's inside okay revved up rugged stylish intel nook delivers innovation every imagination 10 years of intel nook design a version of our 4x4 stylish form and supercharged function go hand in hand with this eye-catching model based on the intel nook 12 pro board oh there's three boxes inside I guess let's take them all out. Okay, box one. What does it say on it? Nothing. Box two. I know at least that there is, it says the power of small on the bottom here. The power of small that goes all the way around. And then this one is exactly the same. So this one looks different. So let's have a look what's inside here then. <laughs> That was cool. Dear reviewer, blah, 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 blah. This one here comes with 512 gigabytes of uh, storage and 16 gigs of RAM, Windows 11 Pro, Iris XE graphics, DDR4. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is tiny. I am sure I've seen this design before. Wait a second. So this here is the Geekom IT11 mini PC. And if you look at the uh, actual size difference here, it's very, very similar thing going around. Even the bottom feet are very, very similar. Here, we've got some intakes on the side. On the back, it's very, very similar. And on the other side, the same. And look at the front. So there's a bull in here. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. 120 watts. Intel sticker and visa mount so you can put it literally behind the monitor. Next one. Ooh. Look at that. Please Intel, don't change this gray color because that is amazing. I love this. Don't make it black, please. Keep it like that. Look at that. This is nice. Goes all the way around. And then the third one. What's inside here then? No way. Is this passive? Whoa. It says meta here. Power there. Can I open these up, Intel? Hmm, you're not here. I'd like to open them up. We'll have to see. This is much heavier than these. It's like double the weight. Power brick is exactly the same. 120 watts in here. There's an HDMI cable as well, but I've got my own there. So let's go check these out. I don't know which one to check out first. Let's check out this one, the one we opened first. Uh, interestingly, the lid comes off. I guess if you want to have more air intake there or something like that. So then my screen recording didn't work previously, so we can do the testing part again. So right now I've got the gray PC plugged in. Then we've got the black PC and then the passive knock here as well. So if you're looking at the specs here on task manager, we can see it's the 12th gen i7 1270p CPU there. We've got 32 gigs of RAM installed. Looks like it's DDR4 there, two sticks. We've got our SSD and then Intel XE graphics. Now, what I wanted to check out is how good is it in terms of the, you know, single core and multi-core performance. Uh, what we're going to be using here is Cinebench R23. And as you can see, we've got the hardware Info64 open. Let's do the multi-core test and see how we are doing here. So we're pulling 50, 55 watts here straight away from the socket. We're not thermal throttling yet. We are running 84C. Okay, 96 there, CPU package. The core clock speeds are, the P cores are going only 2.7 or 2.8 gigahertz. And then the E cores are going 2.3 gigahertz. Interestingly, we've dropped down to about 40 watts now. Looking at the clock speeds, we're actually a bit better. 2.8 still, and then 2.2 on the E cores. I guess we have dropped a little bit. 
Interestingly, before I started the test, we were thermal throttling there, as you can see. But we have gained 10,000 points. For a mini PC like that, it's actually quite good. So if you look at the M1, the multi-core score of the M1 is 7,000. So we're about 30, 50% better uh, than the M1. So if we're looking at the specifications here on uh, that processor, we can see that it goes up to 4.8 gigahertz on the single core score. It's part of the Alder Lake, um, you know, generation of families, Intel 7 and nanometer node, so on. Uh, 12 cores, 4 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, and the maximum turbo power can go up to 64 watts. Base power is 28. Now we saw about 55 being pulled from it. It's probably because thermally limited there. Now this is not overclockable uh, CPU. I tried to open the Intel XDU and it says it's not possible with this one. So you can't adjust any of the parameters there, like even the uh, limit of the power window or anything. I do wish there was a grill in the top there because I think the thermals would be much better on the top, top because right now we're actually choking it from the top. We should have that grill on the top there. That would be much better. It can support DDR4 and DDR5. So the laptop processor, but in just such a small form factor as this. Look at that. As we're doing the single core performance, we are absolutely thermal throttling, which is interesting. It tries to push all the cores at 4.8, but we're not there for that. If we look at the core temperatures, the P cores are thermal throttling. Look they just jump to 100 degrees and we can't quite manage this the clock speeds there so i'm interested to check out the black one because here we have a bit of a better cooling performance and we're going to test this without the top lid on so we can really see if if it actually makes a difference in terms of that i'm not sure if this is the same cpu in there or not we'll find out just constantly thermal throttling look at that all the p cores are thermal throttling we're pulling about 33 36 watts from the socket so the test is done. We've scored 1,623 points. I believe we could have got a little bit more, but it takes so long that I'm not going to do it again. So 1,623 points is still very, very good score. It's higher than the Ryzen 5000, for example. And as you can see here, we're scoring higher than some of the 11th gen still who are like 1,500 points. So still very impressive in terms of, you know, 4.8 gigahertz there, single core spits, even if we're throttling. So even though the performance here is quite impressive, uh, in terms of CPU, I think we could do better just because we're thermal throttling there. So we have either put too powerful of a CPU in there or the cooling is not quite optimized. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So we've got the passive PC on here now. For some reason, it's 720p and it's very, very pixelated screen. But I think it's better than when we go 1080p, it goes even worse. So I think we're going to go to 720p because we can see things a little bit better. So now, as you can see, we've got the Intel i7 1260p, which is very similar processor. We've got 12 cores, 16 threads, which is four performance cores and then eight efficiency cores like we had the 1270p. Just the clock speeds are slightly, slightly higher. We've got 16 gigs of RAM there, as you can see. So what we want to do now is to see if the passive cooling on that PC is actually good enough. So, oh, looks like we've already thermal throttled in the few seconds here. So let us see. So CPU package, look at that idling, like three watts there, minimum five watts. Let's put multi-core on. Let's see what happens. Oh, thermal throttling instantly 102 degrees. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. 33 watts. We are 100%, 100 degrees. So the P cores are all 100 degrees and the E cores about 70, 80. Interesting, we're saying total system power 40, 50 watts. So the P cores are going uh, 2.5 gigahertz not 2.8 as the other ones. And then the E cores are going 1.8, 1.9, two gigahertz, something like that. So extra few hundred megahertz lower. Let's see how much of a lower score are we gonna get it in through this now. Okay, 9,000 points, so about 10% slower, which isn't that bad considering we've absolutely massively thermal throttled there. Let's have a look at the single core score, if that's gonna be any better or not. So interestingly here, you can see one P core going 100 degrees. Let's see the wattage. Here we're pulling about 25 watts. Interestingly, 
what clock speeds are we getting there? About 3.5. So now this is the end of the single core test on the passive PC. I can see that that is quite warm, but we're only pulling about 14 watts from the socket. And look at that, we've scored 1,464 points, which is quite good. We've lost about 10% in terms of single core and multi-core score, actually less than 10% in the single core score, but we're 100% silent. So last knock is the small black one. Let's turn that one on and let's see how good that's gonna be. So this CPU here is a 1260p, uh, which is interesting. I think these CPUs should be swapped 1270 here and 1260 here, just because uh, we've got better cooling in there so we'll open the hardware info as well so we can keep an eye on that and let's do cinebench score first here so look at that we're pulling 48 watts from the socket there 3.2 gigahertz and then 2.6 on the e cores and as you can see having the top off there makes a big difference actually i guess the power window dropped now to 40 watts look at that over 10,000 points. I did open the XTU here and interestingly it looks like we might be able to you know do something here. First of all we've got the boost power time window okay. Let's just max that one out because we know we're not thermal throttling. Okay there we go. We've not changed anything just the power window is now much much longer. Let's do that test again and then see if we've improved any in any way i'll just reset this so now we should be able to pull that like 50 48 watts something like that much much longer until we're power limited 3.2 2.6 look we're still pulling 48 watts still having thermal throttled as you can see we're about 80 c that's got good news look at that 11.5 thousand points that's very, very, very good. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more because we have some thermal room over there. We didn't in on this one, neither did we on that one. So now the boost short power draw, let's uh, put that to um, 80 watts, okay? Short power draw there. So 80 watt and then turbo power max, let's put that 60 watts, okay? Apply continue still pushing 48 49 watts the clock speeds are the same so i guess now we've given enough power for the cpu but we don't have the clock speeds to actually keep up with it like the clock speeds is low enough that we doesn't need any more power okay getting to the end now 11,693 slightly more let's see if we put turbo power and turbo boost short as well unlimited and then let's see if anything changes start that again see we're not exceeding that 48 49 watts that we've seen drawn here so we're basically saying unlimited time unlimited power pull as much as you want so right now it sustains all the clock speeds here as you can see uh, 3.2 gigahertz and then 2.6 gigahertz there it would be nice if we could get the 1270p in this because we've got so much thermal headroom to push the cpu even further about the same score 11632 so nothing changed there so if you're getting this Get the XTU and then unlimit, like unlock the power. Just tell it to run always as that. I'm also going to do the a speed test for the C drive, the Samsung drive there. Okay, I'm just comparing two processors here. The 1260p and then 1270p, as you can see in here. The cores are the same. Everything is the same. But here, this is on Intel Arc here, just so you know. The max turbo frequency is 4.8, so we've got slightly higher uh, clock speeds by 100 megahertz. And then the efficiency cores go 100 megahertz higher as well. The turbo power is the same, and then the wattage is the same. And then everything else is literally the same about the CPU. I can't find any other differences uh, than that. So I do wish we got the 1270p on this little one, just because we've got so much more thermal headroom. But looking at the SSD benchmarks, obviously it's a Gen 4 speed SSD in there. We're getting about 6.5 gigabytes per second read speeds and about 4.8 gigabytes per second write speeds. So it's, uh, you know, quite good. Out of these three, the black one is my favorite one. Just because we get two Thunderbolt ports, I like that one. The best thermal performance. 
but I do like the design and color of this one. Let's have a look at the ports. So in the back, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports. We've got uh, one USB 10 gigabit port, which I've got my um, keyboard and mouse plugged into, and then one USB 2.0. There's two HDMI ports as well, so you can literally just have two screens straight away plugged into the back of there, and then have Thunderbolt docks for these two Thunderbolt ports for all the other accessories as well. And then we've got a 2.5 gig LAN built in there as well. There is a screw hole or something in there, so I'm not sure what that is. Then in the front, we have one headphone and mic combo check, and then two more 10 gigabit USB type A ports. So I'm not sure what's the difference in here. In terms of the ports, they look very, very similar as what we just saw there. Look, everything is the same, and the front is the same as well. But it looks like, okay, let's see. There we go. That comes out very, very easily. And then the legs or the lid comes off. And here we have uh, the inside of it. Interesting, you can have the secondary uh, M.2 slots in here as well. As you can see, there's a B key SATA pod there as well. Okay, underneath that M.2 is... Okay, see, it's a Samsung SSD. So it's a 980 Pro, most likely, uh, that model in here. That's the ones that you usually see on the laptops that actually show, don't show like Samsung SSD brand on the top, but they're Samsung ones. Uh, you can see the Intel, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card there. NVMe only. DDR4 here, two sticks, 3200 megahertz, that is. Okay, there we go. Look, the Wi-Fi antenna goes just to the top there. But then here we have the cooling solution. I mean, this is the PC, can you believe that? And as you can see, there's even a thermal pad on top of this heatsink here. Can you see that? And that touches there so that we get like more kind of heat conducted or transferred to the frame of the PC, which is around it as well, which is very, very clever. And here we can see the fan. We've got two heat pipes going around there. Looks very, very similar design as what we've seen in some of the other mini PCs. Now I'm not gonna take the thermal paste off because you can see underneath there, there's the actual chip that's been cooled through these. Let's just put it back. And the cool thing is this actual uh, bottom bit uh, has these thermal pads that actually take some of the heat from the heat sinks. NVMe SSDs, as you can see, this long one and even the short one here are actually transferred some of the heat to the bottom plates, which is another clever design to design something so small. So this is the front, so that's the back, putting it back. It's simple. I like the color of this. This looks super, super nice but it's, it's, it's impressive. So I'm not sure if you want to take this apart because there is a lot of screws in here. Here we go. We've got the, the front lid off. And then this one here is bare bones unit because you can see there's no NVMe installed there and then no RAM installed. Looks like they've not used a thermal paste here, but a thermal pad on the actual CPU. Okay. So that's the frame of it. There is <laughs> million and one screws there. There's a different power plug here as well, if you want to use a different one than this DC plug. But the inside looks very, very similar than to all the other ones. It's so interesting, this passive nook doesn't actually have any like thermal uh, pads on the SSDs or that, but there is a, quite a big kind of empty space there. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. So I've managed to put the passive PC back together now as well. All the screws are back. There are a few screw holes like in the bottom of it and on the side of it. So you can mount it onto other things just to you know, have it stand there like that. But interestingly, like I mentioned before, there's no Thunderbolt pods in the back of this one, just HDMI, Ethernet port. I suppose this is the same 2.5 gigs, two USB type A ports, and then two USB type A ports in the front as well. So no, no type C on the passive one. So then the conclusion about these nooks then, I like this design. I don't think this is quite ready yet, but this one here, looks absolutely amazing just because we've got the thermals well good much better than on this one i wish this design was all the way around it almost feels like they've put it the wrong way i think this should be on the top of the pc rather than on the bottom of the pc so this would be the bottom and then the other one on the top that would be a much better way of doing it just because it gets the air in from the top and the thermally would be much better than this here like why why is it like that on the bottom i like the design i like the color of this this uh, meta passive pc very interesting as well 
I personally am not that much interested in it, but let me know if you are. Some people really need a passive PC, but to me, this is the most impressive thing. How small this is, how many Thunderbolt parts of this, and how much power this actually packs like you've got serious amount of power in this so uh, it's pretty interesting i'm not sure where to get these i'll try to find something and put it in the description below but if you do want to build yourself a great pc the best bang for bucket then check out the great pc build guide in the description and below find the video that's closest to your budget and then click on that one and then configure the budget to fit your needs and then build yourself an awesome pc without any performance loss thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time Bye bye